I'm in the Land Forces Museum in Bydgoszcz, Poland. I have this uh, weapon with me, which is recognizable to all. The Kalashnikov, this is the AKM version, which was developed uh, after the AK-47, but used in conjunction with it. So this weapon itself uh, dates to the late 1950s. This is one which was made in Poland and produced in 1967. This is a real weapon. It's got the firing pin intact. And uh, if we had enough ammunition, we could go out shooting with it. Uh, now, the, the, the Kalashnikovs, all Kalashnikovs have a reputation of being uh, not much good when they fire. And uh, the, uh, the other hand, they're easily mass produced. Certainly the accuracy of these weapons is not comparable to those which are produced by NATO countries uh, in the 60s and 70s. But on the other hand, it was the idea was to put out a lot of fire in one go. That was the Soviet doctrine, whereas for example in the British Army, the idea was to fire much less, but fire accurately. So there's two different types of doctrine, and they both to a certain extent uh, work. Uh, to give one example, uh, Rommel in the First World War, he said that you have to fire a lot and to fight less, or words to that effect. And that was something he put into practice in the Second World War, uh, for example, the 1940 campaign. His uh, units used huge amounts of ammunition, but uh, the, the result was that uh, he was successful. So that you can see that there's um, good points to both ideas. Now, uh, another thing about this weapon is that uh, it, it's noted for being you can sort of change the parts around which you couldn't do with Western uh, weapons. I don't really think that that is true. I mean, it's often said to be you can sort of, uh, it doesn't matter who gets with what parts and then you can, but I, I doubt that that would actually work. Maybe, of course, with new, we new weapons, as with any anyway, you can sort of change the parts around. Another thing about it is the easy availability of the parts. Okay, the Soviet Union and its satellites produced um, tens of millions of these, obviously I think it's tens of millions, uh, and so that, uh, that did make parts uh, more easily available. It's a weapon you've seen all over the world and in various forms, and uh, so for that it's probably the best known weapon of the 20th century. Still in use today. So this started in prototypes just after the Second World War, so uh, and still being used uh, in many countries. Right, good. So let's have a look at how we clean it. AKM, Polish manufacturer, and this weapon is noted for being something that never needs cleaning. Right? Wrong. <laughs> Any weapon which isn't cleaned regularly will cease to fire, but before ceasing to fire, it will cease to be accurate. So it needs to be cleaned. And today, I'm going to take it to pieces as though to clean it. Right, so, uh, first thing, it's got the, uh, this on here. So we'll take off the magazine. Now, next thing, check it's not loaded. Oops. Oops, sorry. Forgot the safety catch. Doesn't appear to be loaded. So fire a shot, not at somebody. Hit a plane. <laughs> so, uh, next thing to do is to take the cover off. Press this down here, and this comes up. This is the hardest bit. Haven't got used to that one yet. <laughs> okay, this is what it looks like inside. Now, uh, this, this bit, the spring, has to come out. Springs out, then this will just slide back. 
This is probably the most delicate part of the entire mechanism. Probably. So this, these two, this will separate. Now we have to take off the, uh, the gas. Oops, sorry. Gas comes off. And finally, this part here. So, that is how to strip down an AKM for cleaning. Now, when I was in the army, which was a, a while ago, we had to, uh, this, this was really important, you had to strip weapons down all the time to do it very, very quickly. And uh, so there was lots of practice given. Now, I haven't touched one of these things in nearly 40 years. So, uh, well, at least not a, a Kalashnikov. So, I was, uh, a bit slow with it okay so let's pretend I've just cleaned the whole thing let's put it now back together again hoping I remember how to do it so this goes back in there All right gas the gas regulator will uh, determine how quickly the weapon reloads but also the more gas the more likely it's to reload but the more uh, it's going to kick at the back so oops i'm trying to do this in such a way as it to be visible to the camera so okay now this bit, possibly the most important bit, because without this, it's not gonna fire. So, let's, uh, in fact, with most, without most of the things, it's not gonna fire, but this is, the, this is the action part, this is the firing bit. Now, this goes in here. Right, oops, sorry. So that's uh, correctly. Yeah. Spring. onto there and now the end bit possibly the hardest thing of all it's getting this on and uh, one thing of uh, I think that when people think of this weapon as being of uh, it's it's a weapon which is it's not delicate it's 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 anybody can do it and uh, it, it's a point and shoot uh, by somebody who's never had a weapon in the hands of before. I don't think that this is all that easy actually and it's much more de delicate than I think that people often think. So that goes into there like that and now like that, like that and, and down. Right, uh, we fire one shot because we want to make sure there's no rounds in them. Might have been some invisible ones. Ammunition down like that, safety catch, three positions, automat automatic, single shot, and safe, that's safe, and uh, that's on, on, on uh, single shot, and the middle shot, middle position, is when it's on automatic, but you really don't want to use that too often, load, pull this back, Single shot fire. AKM.